It's a computer the size of a postage stamp. There's no batteries. You don't plug it in. It powers itself by harvesting the energy from radio waves. Are we finally seeing the dawn of the Internet of Things at scale in an affordable way? Perhaps. IoT has had a ton of promise for quite some time, but adoption has been a little slower than forecast. One reason, of course, is cost. Another is complexity. And a critical one is support systems, a platform that works. Williot thinks it solved that with the IoT Pixel, a cheap smart tracker and a brand new tool the universal automation platform here to chat is william vp stephen statler welcome stephen john great to talk to you again hey super pumped to have you back on tech first last time we chatted you were talking about the william bluetooth tag it's cool it's tiny it's battery free uh, it had a lot of capability now you've got the pixel what's new well, it's a major step forward for us. This is version two of our product. It's, it's one part of a platform that also includes edge software and the cloud. But if we focus on the pixel, because it's kind of a, the most obvious disruptive thing, it's a computer the size of a postage stamp. There's no batteries. You don't plug it in. It powers itself by harvesting the energy from radio waves, which is actually a very meager source of energy, but we're we redesigned a, a chip and uh, we redesigned it again for version two to do this particularly well. So IoT Pixel is a big step forward uh, on what we see as a journey to transitioning from the internet of expensive things uh, to the internet of everyday things or the internet of trillions as we talk about it, which is essentially a hundred fold increase in the number of things that are connected. and the reason why IoT Pixels is capturing uh, a lot of interest and is generating excitement from us and our customers is that it's a big step in terms of performance and range. So uh, essentially it uh, doubles the range, uh, more than doubles the range versus version one. And it it's a lot more efficient at capturing the energy and transmitting it. So it transmits uh, faster, which basically means you can get uh, more robust performance when you start to put it on things like plastic crates and uh, clothing and medicine and all these things that previously were offline, uh, you can start to track not just occasionally when someone taps or scans them, but a continuous view in real time of where they are and start to get sensing information and all these things, which is really what we believe is uh, required to get to that next level of IoT. And for those who didn't watch the previous episode where we talked about your Bluetooth tag, which is now the uh, the Pixel, I mean, mm -hmm. you've got things in there. It's not just a here I am tag. You've got temperature monitoring. You've got things that can sense dilution in, in a solution, you know, how much of a certain chemical is present. You've got things that can measure motion or processes that are happening or not happening. So it's a pretty significant uh, cable, even fill level if it's a liquid and it needs to be replenished or other things like that. Now, you talked at the time about, you know, wanting to get that tag in the pennies per, and you had a roadmap to get there and there was some time. And I, I think I could swear I saw something on your website or in the marketing PR materials that it was near zero cost. Uh, how close are you now? Well, it, it's going to be a while till we get to to zero because obviously it's it's a computer it's an arm it's got an arm processor there's three cores it's got ram and rom and so forth what you may have seen is our announcement that we're no longer going to charge for our part of producing the pixel so we're essentially licensing it to people that do make smart tags for free so today smart tags are made by uh, companies like Avery Dennison, who are the largest uh, maker of those things. Uh, uh, we actually just announced a partnership with Identive, who focus on more specialized, uh, uh, sophisticated, complex, uh, lower volume uh, smart tags. So we asked ourselves, how can we accelerate adoption? And one of the things we can do is not load the cost of the, the smart tags. And so we're providing the license uh, to make uh, our tags for free. And so if you're thinking of 
adding them to a product like a, a plastic crate or a hang tag. And maybe not every plastic crate is going to be connected to the cloud. This is a way of reducing that kind of speed bump um, so mm -hmm. that we only charge for the cloud connectivity and the edge processing, which is what allows you to start to unlock the data, do the sensing, and achieve the scalability that allows you to have, for instance, 100,000 tags all on items of apparel in a store. So you know where every product is. You can track if it's in the back room, the front room, without having any um, um, employees having to do anything, which is, you know. Go back and check. Is. I'll check in the back if I have that size for you. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I kind of love that because my next question was going to be in around, look, hardware is cool, but software provides the value. So I love that you've gone to a licensing model there where basically the tag is provided uh, and, and you charge for the software because, you know, people aren't paying to have a tag attached to their merchandise. People aren't paying to have a tag attached to their to their inventory or other things like that. They're paying for the data that they can get out of there, for the intelligence that they can have on how their supply chain is functioning or not functioning. <laughs> this is 2022, right? So talk to us about this universal automation platform that you're launching. Yeah, so the universal automation platform is part of our, our cloud. It's actually in alpha now. Uh, we uh, Since we last spoke, we launched a, a starter kit. So uh, previously it cost somewhere between 50 and or, or $100,000 to enter our early access program. And now we're selling these starter kits for $500. Um, and we're seeing huge demands, uh, shipping hundreds of these things. Uh, and one of the things that you get access to in that is this uh, universal automation platform. And what this uh, UAP is, uh, it's essentially automation back end that natively talks to the tags. And it means that you can, rather than getting some data and some analytics and looking at a dashboard and then maybe a few weeks later deciding to do something, it allows you to trigger a Slack message if you've sold the last medium-sized black sweater. Uh, it, it allows you to trigger uh, an alert if an auto-injector with insulin is starting to reach above the, the highest level of temperature that you think is, is safe. So it's, it's a way of having uh, very simple codeless if-then-else type triggers. And then we have a library of actually very large library, which we're slowly unlocking of connectors to enterprise apps. So these are things like Slack, but also Salesforce. So if you want to mm -hmm. have um, automatic tracking of inventory in service vehicles and you want to know, uh, warn the driver, oh, you left your oscilloscope at that uh, uh, site or you're running low on this kind of uh, resistor in your kit bag or your tool um, uh, or, or maybe... Uh, a low watermark to replenish uh, set top boxes if you're if you're working for a, a cable company. All of that sort of stuff can be done without any coding with existing integrations with enterprise applications. Um, and, and that's part of that's one part of what we're doing to try and increase the rate of scale and this move to what we're calling IoT2. This episode is sponsored by Dollar Smart, my creator coin. Yeah, it's crypto. No, it's not a scam. Buy some to support the show, sponsor the show, get weekly rewards as the coin grows, or just to be part of the community at rally.io slash creator slash SMRT. I love that you made that kit available. I, I forget if you said it was 50 bucks or, or whatever it was, but super cheap and super available. I mean, that's part of the challenge of IoT, right? You said before somebody wants to enter a deal with you, you there's multiple steps. It's 50 to 100K, you know, let's do all this stuff. Now ship a box. <laughs> right? right, And you can get started with small projects. And guess what? That's the PC model. That's a smartphone model. That's how almost all technology that's big in enterprise starts. It comes in the back door. Some little department says, I'm going to try this. And there's shadow IT and there's all kinds of problems with that. I get it. But there's also ways of stimulating innovation because 
somebody has an idea and they can execute quickly, cheaply, easily. So you've got no code tools. Um, that's super interesting. Basically, a, a product manager or, or a line of business manager can can take this and, and, and create something useful. Exactly. Yeah, we wanted to take the coding out of it. We wanted to take the integration with third party apps out of it. Now, of course, there's still going to be new apps. There's a set of existing legacy apps. So maybe it's uh, your NetSuite and, and we have things like that, which we have connectors for. But there's also a whole ecosystem of new kinds of software uh, that we're going to be supporting with these kits. So the kits allow these innovators and early adopters in the enterprise to try stuff out. But they're also a way of us moving from a kind of major account style, we do everything uh, strategy to a partner ecosystem. And so we, uh, we're just about to um, announce a, a new edition of our partner program works with Williot. Um, and the, the starter kits and a partner kit are all part of that because there's new kinds of software that are being built that weren't even thought about to manage things like serialization. So if you look at most ERP systems, they assume that you have SKUs, but they're not really built around uh, the concept of every product having a digital twin, having like a, a mm -hmm. VIN number in the, in the sky, if you kind of extend the car metaphor to, to other things. But there are products from a whole range of really interesting startups and established companies that are being built around managing this unique identity uh, so that every Ralph Lauren um, pullover has an ID. And so you can start or, or even a crate of food has a unique ID. So you can start to manage things like traceability of food for recalls and also extending shelf life because you're not looking at, at the SKU level, you're actually looking at when that crate of zucchinis was harvested, what route it took through the system so that you can optimize and you can spot, oh, the zucchini has been sitting in the sunshine for uh, three hours and that's gonna be bad for shelf life. Let's A, note that so that maybe when it does arrive to the store, we put it at the front of the store. And uh, you know we can also talk to the, send a message to the, uh, uh, to the farmer or the distributor to, to help them tune what they're doing. So there's a lot of things that are all related here. The starter kits are kind of uh, this dual prong approach to get the product in the hands of the, uh, the enterprise, but it also allows us to enable this uh, whole ecosystem of companies that are writing this next generation serialization software that opens up these new use cases. It's a little bit mind blowing, Steve, because there's all of the unlocking that goes with smart matter, um, knowing what is where, when, how, what temperature it is, what's happening to it physically, jostling, all those other things. But you also said the words digital twin, and that's interesting because we have seen the digitalization of everything in some sense. We've, you're almost bringing in metaverse type concepts when you say digital twin. And while you maybe don't want an NFT of the zucchini that you're buying and eating that night, but maybe you do want an NFT of the Louis Vuitton bag that you bought, right? And Absolutely. maybe that's possible in some way, shape or form. Are you exploring that or what's going on there? Yeah, um, this whole uh, anti-counterfeit use case has been an ongoing theme since we launched the company about five, five years ago. People want that digital twin. They want to embed the postage stamp size computer, partly just to understand where it came from, but also to know if it's real. And that applies to luxury goods. So we have a bunch of customers that are high-end fashion companies that are interested in, in that. Uh, but it also applies to medicine. Uh, especially in other parts of the world, counterfeit medicine is just a terrible problem and it can have really um, disastrous uh, consequences. So knowing that, that what your, whether it's baby food or COVID uh, vaccine, that, that this is actually going to work is really important, as well as knowing whether it's been kept in at the right temperature. Very interesting. So as you're seeing companies start to implement this, um, what are some of the results that you're seeing? What are they achieving? 
Well, um, longer shelf life for perishable products is actually one of the quickest wins that we're seeing. Um, it's probably the least glamorous of the use cases, but it's the one that seems to be moving the fastest. So we've decided to focus on it. Um, the world is moving to reusable transport items as, as a vehicle for moving everything through the supply chain. Um, the days of kind of throwing away the cardboard box that your um, that your fruit and vegetables uh, and even apparel and medicine are delivered in is is going away because guess what? It's really hard to get raw materials. They're in short supply because of all these supply chain issues. So, so we're seeing a, a huge expansion of using plastic crates and pallets to move things around. And it just so happens that if you add a couple of our stickers on there, which you can do like almost instantly, suddenly you've got a smart crate or a smart pallet. And that then allows you to start to, if you look at perishable products, uh, extend the shelf life. So uh, if I can put a day of shelf life on fruit, uh, on vegetables, on meat, it means I'm throwing away a lot less stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's great for everything. It's great for the environment. There's less putrefying stuff that's emitting carbon. Uh, it means that there's uh, less write-offs. It also means the quality of the produce in the supermarket is, um, is, is a lot better. And uh, you know, if you find a place where you can get great tasting fruit and vegetables, uh, it, it's kind of like an anchor product. It's a bit like putting the milk at the back of the store as a way of getting you in the store. If you can find fresher fruit and vegetables, you'll switch. Uh, our surveys say that you will switch to, to that market. Uh, and so it helps with customer acquisition and increasing market share. So almost everything is helped by extending shelf life. It uh, reduces costs. It reduces overhead. Uh, it can actually reduce manpower. It reduces your carbon footprint and it increases profit. You have, you, you've got a better product, you know, getting more people coming through the, the door. So we're focusing on putting tags on plastic crates and, that doesn't mean to say we're not doing the other things, but it's just kind of our priority. So, yeah, we're still working with the pharmaceutical companies on tags on vaccine vials. We're still working with the apparel companies, but it's just so easy to put the stickers on plastic mm -hmm. crates. Why not do it? Mm -hmm. And huge return, right? Huge benefit. I, I think I saw some data from you and I actually interviewed somebody on this, I believe about a year ago, as much of a third of the food that's farmed, uh, created, um, produced globally is wasted. And, and that's obviously a huge waste in and of itself, but every resource that went into farming that food is also wasted. And it's so, it, 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 it you're just redoubling the, the waste and, and the environmental damage that's being caused there. So that sounds very, very interesting. Well, Steve, great to chat, great to connect again. Uh, good to learn what you're doing with the pixel and, um, Thanks for taking the time. Uh, great questions. Really enjoyed talking with you, John. Thanks for your interest.